At Hawthorne, we're business under the influence of change, of innovation, and we're pushing every element forward. Hawthorne, business under the influence of us. How's it going, MJ Biz? My name is Chris Hagedorn. I'm the general manager of the Hawthorne Gardening Company. As we sit here in December, I just wanted to take a quick moment to reflect on the kind of year that we've had. Now, obviously, it was a year that confronted the whole world with the kind of challenges that we haven't faced in our lifetimes. But despite the challenges, the issues, and the tragedies that are going to define this year moving forward, there have been some real positives for our industry. For Hawthorne, we've seen growth across every product category, significant growth. And more importantly, we haven't just kept our associates employed, but been able to pay bonuses to everybody in our entire business. Beyond that, we've launched some pretty exciting innovation. Now, my team's going to tell you more about that after this video and go into more detail than I can, but rest assured, it's a lot of exciting stuff. And that's important to who we at Hawthorne want to be to the industry. It's our goal to be innovators, um, to bring new products and techniques to cultivators, to help our retail partners in any way we can, and to continue playing that role in driving the industry forward. Now, I don't want to go on too much longer because you guys, I'm sure, are having long days. But I do want to say a big thank you to three specific groups. First, I want to thank the growers, everyone out there who continues to trust us and our products in your facilities. That's an honor and a privilege that we really take seriously. Second, thank you to the retail partners who continue to support us. You guys are essential to the industry and we depend on you every single day. Finally, and most importantly, I want to thank every single Hawthorne associate out there. You all fight so hard to represent our brands the right way and to make sure that we remain at the leading edge of this industry. With that, I'll hand it over to my team so they can talk to you more about LEDs and our vision for the future of cultivation. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Chris. Good afternoon, MJ BizCon attendees. Uh, excited to be here with you today. Um, I'm Tara Stevenson, Category Manager for the Lighting Division at Hawthorne Gardening Company. With me are my colleagues Ken Garver and Mike Anderson. And today we're excited to talk to you about innovation in LED and introduce our new Gavita CT1930E LED. Hi, my name is Ken Garver. I'm a sales director here at Hawthorne and I was part of the development team for our LED products. A little bit different format this year. I'm going to miss not seeing a lot of you in person, but we're happy to present virtually. My name is Mike Anderson. I'm in the technical services group. My specialty is lighting and I've been doing lighting in the indoor gardening space for over 25 years. Let's start the conversation by talking about the history of lighting and how far we've come. So the artificial grow lighting uh, indoor started in France in about the 1860s. And by the time 1930s uh, came around, you saw innovations in lighting that included the incandescent lamp and then some of the arc uh, discharge lamps uh, about the same time. But a lot happened in terms of uh, plant growth in 1960 because in the 1960s high pressure sodium was uh, invented along with metal halide and believe it or not about the same time um, LED uh, was commercialized and it's not the LED that we see today it was really little small indicator lights that you'd use on control panels and that sort of thing so it would take a long time before you would see LEDs um, get into our gardens. But a high pressure sodium was uh, an innovation that certainly made its way into the indoor gardening space um, years and years ago. So it's been the workhorse for over 25 years. But by the time 2000s and about the year 2000, LEDs became more popular in the, in the indoor growth space um, because the power levels came up and there was uh, multiple colors available so they could create spectrums to hopefully grow plants. But if you remember those early um, LED days, you know, it was a, a blue light and a, and a red light. And so it looked, uh, looked kind of funky in your garden. Um, and they did that because they thought that if they just increased blue light and red light, um, it would help um, mimic the McCree curve. And that's what plants use for photosynthetic response. The problem with that was is that the, the plants really use all light to grow from 400 to 700 nanometers. So all colors of the, of the spectrum are used for plants to grow. And when you saw uh, white light sources in terms of LED start to become powerful, um, you started to see more and more adoption into the indoor garden space. Absolutely, Mike. High pressure sodium really has been a staple for our industry. I remember when the single-ended 1,000-watt high-pressure sodium was the most commonly used lamp, 
and how disruptive the new double-ended 1,000-watt high-pressure sodium was in terms of a better performing product. I see LED being the next evolution here as far as taking us to a, a higher level of efficiency and efficacy overall. That's really what we're here to talk about today. That's great information, you guys. It's amazing how far the lighting technology has come for indoor gardening. Um, so with that, is now the right time for consumers to switch to LED? Um, what do you guys think the holdbacks are or benefits? Now is the perfect time to consider switching to LED. Uh, let's face it, uh, in, the, in the past several years, there's really been no innovation in HID technology and double-ended HPS has been around for many, many years. So there's not a lot going on there. Um, in terms of LED, the performance of the LEDs uh, are improving. From that perspective, there's really no reason why you wouldn't want to consider moving the LED. Um, whether it's a retrofit of your existing garden, you know, consider reducing power consumption in your high pressure sodium rooms, or if you're building a new facility, um, it would be really a disservice to take a look at only HPS at this point in time and not consider LED. Um, if I was building a new facility myself, I would be putting LED in it. We have a lot of areas to talk about LED, energy incentive rebates, environmental impacts with the lack of mercury involved with LED versus high intensity discharge lighting, lower heat output involved with LED versus high pressure sodium, longer life with LED and less service uh, required as far as relamping and what is required to maintain a high lumen output of your horticulture fixture. Really, when we look at LED, it, it truly is better in every way except for one, and that's been cost. However, we definitely have some ways to bring that down. While well, LED technology has truly come a long way, um, Hawthorne has taken it even further with the Gavita CT1930E LED. I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Danka Kai, uh, head of our R&D department at Hawthorne, to talk more about the product details. I'm Dr. Danka Kai. I'm director of lighting product development in Hawthorne Gardening Company. Today, I will introduce our first industry HID LED retrofit product. It's Gavita CT1930E. What we are talking about one by one retrofit. The retrofit means you don't change anything. Change back your HID light, put the LED light on. So that's how our name comes from. We deliver lighting 30 micro per second. That's the energy come out from fixture will go to the plant. For this LED fixtures, it's a broad white spectrum, which is to mimic HPS spectrum, but we also add some component which we believe spectrum wise is better than HPS fixtures. So all LEDs, 640 LEDs is a high power ceramic LEDs. And then these high power ceramic LEDs can deliver five to 10 times power than these individual small plastic based LEDs. LED is a little bit afraid of the heat because of the properties of the semiconductor materials. First to deal with LED products in this compact size to deliver lighting 30 micromoles is heat management. We use a material which can three times faster to dissipate the heat versus the die casting aluminum most of our competitors use. For optical distributions, we are doing even better than HPS light. In the market, we have very successful HID fixtures, Gavita HID. It's not only how much micro come out from our HID fixture, is the light distribution making the plant grow happy. Our fixture provide a very uniform light. For the LED fixture, we are doing improvement. We make our LED fixture deliver the light more uniformly than our HID HR96 fixtures. The magic there is a light 8 to 99% optical lens is what you can see here. So it means what? It means if you put this lens on the top of this high ceramic power LED, it has only 1 to 2% noise. HID fixtures, as the glass lamp is made from glass, they can handle all the chemical attacks. For us, we don't use glass because the material selections in this fixture already can handle it. We are doing design, we are doing material selections to make this fixture reliable. This is the fixture. 
which is 55 degrees C rating based on the UL8800 standard, which is the safety standard to determine is this fixture safe in which temperature for operation in North America. For HID light, we know our Gavita E series streamline HID fixture, it can be controlled up to 500 fixtures. But from now, we are different time, we are LEDs. We are claim 2,000 fixtures. We want every fixture deliver consistent radiation power to the plant. So how we reach this level? We have our own controller embedded in this fixture. You cannot see from the outside. But this controller will guarantee 2,000 fixtures with super good repeatability. This is coaxis, copper-based internet cable. And why also we can say 2,000 fixtures with unwavering repeatability. And also you maybe can see from our fixture, this is RJ45, totally waterproof. Our fixture is IP66 rating. Beyond the controllability, we improve from 500 to 2,000 from these ID fixtures. I want to highlight another important electric characteristic we are improving is surge protection. For regular HID fixture, the surge protection only can up to 1,000 volt. But from LED fixture, the CT93E, we are claiming 6,000 volt as minimum. Very well. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for that great content, Dinka. Um, let's unpack a little bit more of what that means for a grower. So Dinka talked about the benefits of the CT1930E, which are fantastic. Um, let's dive in specifically to the one-to-one -one HPS replacement. Really what we're talking about is a one-to-one -one replacement, take down a thousand watt high pressure sodium and hang a 700 watt LED that will give you improved output, longer life, lower maintenance. That's going to be incredibly time and cost saving for growers. Like, you know, getting an entire room reconfigured is extremely expensive. So that's, that's a wonderful benefit for them. All right, next let's talk about temperature. What are your guys' opinions on that? Well, it's a fact. I mean, when you take a thousand watts out and you put 750 watts into a room uh, in terms of the lighting, you know, the, the temperature is going to go down. And that's what will happen with the retrofit from high pressure sodium to LED. When you take a look at temperature load or heat load in a room, it goes one to one with wattage in the room. So if you take all the wattage that you um, put into your room from dehumidification, fans, lighting, anything else that has a motor on it, um, all of that um, eventually it turns into heat. Um, so with high pressure sodium, you got a thousand watts, you're going to have a thousand watts of heat. So when it comes to HVAC design, you have to design around that to take a thousand watts per fixture out of the room. Um, with LED, you're going to have uh, significantly less um, wattage, so you're going to have less heat. One of the biggest things we see with heat generation on high pressure sodium is, is the forward throw due to infrared spectrum and putting a higher heat load down upon the plant itself. When we look at LED, which is thermally cooled with a giant heat sink on the back and is really dissipating the heat through the top of the fixture away from the plant. So Ken, what's the standard operating temperature for a high pressure sodium fixture? Well, high pressure sodium, the lamp itself wants to run very hot. And again, it creates light by heat and pressure. Whereas LED likes to operate in a much cooler temperature. So when you look at, when you look at this with regards to your garden itself, typical crops, your garden does not want to see these massively high temperatures. It, it works against producing your crop. So really everything about where we're putting the LED fixture in this application lends itself to better efficiencies. Um, you know, Ken's right. The lower temperature that the LED likes to operate in is much closer to what the garden uh, temperatures are run at. And therefore, the LED makes perfect sense to be in the indoor garden at this point in time. One of the points we want to talk about with the CT1930 is its ability to operate in a higher ambient temperature. Now, we just talked about your growing environment being in a lower ambient temperature. But when we see some of these greenhouse lights and they're operational during the day, sunlight can create very, very high temperatures up at the, up at the ceiling where these fixtures are mounted. 
The CT1930 is the first fixture that we have offered that carries a 55 degrees Celsius ambient rating. And that's a huge advantage when it comes to the, the greenhouse grower. Um, I've been into many greenhouses across North America and in Europe. And at the ceiling height, um, the temperatures are incredible. Um, you wouldn't think so, even in uh, colder climates in the Midwest of the United States, um, in a cooler day where it's maybe 40 degrees outside, but it's a sunny day. Um, at the ceiling height, uh, the temperatures are, you know, 120, 130 degrees. And um, if you're operating fixtures at those temperatures, it can degrade the electronic components in the fixtures. Um, so with the CT1930 having a 55 degrees centigrade um, ambient temperature rating, it's the highest temperature rating of any fixture I've ever come across. And so therefore, if you have a greenhouse situation that runs high temperatures near the ceilings, CT1930 is a really good choice. One of the big ones is power savings. With LED, we're really seeing a 25 to 30% overall wattage reduction in a one-to-one -one replacement. So in high pressure sodium, it's a thousand watt unit and uh, in the past, um, LED uh, fixtures that try to, you know, duplicate high pressure sodium um, were pushing a thousand watts if, if you wanted to replace HPS. Um, today, that's not the case anymore because the efficiency of LED has increased dramatically. So when you take a thousand watt HPS system out, you're putting in, a, you know, 750 watt LED unit that will replace it directly one for one. And that's exactly what this system does. So you don't have any uh, decrease in light output. So you're not gonna see a reduction in plant growth um, by considering the CT1930. That's huge. Um, what about safety? Safety is a good one to go into. LED obviously operates at a much lower temperature than high pressure sodium and we can draw a safety correlation there. There's also a lack of heavy metals. There's no mercury in LED like there is in high intensity discharge lighting. And the other part of it is, you know, there's no glass to break. And that's certainly another thing that can contaminate your garden. So one of the other major advantages in moving to LED is that you don't have any glass that will break and contaminate your garden and you don't have any mercury to contend with as well. Um, so that's much, uh, much safer product. Yeah, I think as we continue to see um, laws come up like Health Canada, um, well, it'll be really important to continue to put a focus on safety. Uh, the next topic I wanted to discuss was lumen depreciation and LED versus HPS and, and which one's more beneficial for growers. Lumen depreciation is a big one. So let's actually go a little bit farther back. Thousand watt high pressure sodium that was originally powered by old magnetic systems. The ignition sequence was damaging to the lamp and caused lumen depreciation to be increased. Your light levels dropped off rapidly. With the advent of electronic ballast, we did see a slight improvement here where we maintained light levels for a longer period of time, but there's still the damaging effects of ignition and a high heat load on the lamp itself. Comparison to LED, where there isn't a high ignition pulse or something like that that damages the lamp, you have instant on, instant off light, you don't have a warm up period. It's just a much, it's a much more efficient and evolved technology. Yeah, and lumen maintenance is important. So that basically means that if you start off with a brand new uh, lamp, you know, you, and you start off with 100% of your light levels and you wait a year, a year from now, say that the, the light levels is only 97% or 96% of what it was a year ago. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but at the end of the day, um, the growers are looking for every advantage that they can get. And if you reduce your light output by 1%, you typically see a reduction in plant growth by 1%. So with LED, you see a very flat lumen depreciation curve and the systems that are being built today um, actually take the uh, power up on the LEDs as they age so that you really don't see any uh, lumen depreciation over a period of time, uh, certainly within the warranty period of the product. Um, so from that perspective, um, lumen depreciation is negligible when it comes to LED. One of the other things I'd like to discuss with you is what about maintenance? Um, with LED, you put the fixture up, you keep it clean, and uh, there really is no maintenance whatsoever with it. Um, so there's, from a maintenance perspective, it's zero with LED. And from a maintenance perspective with HPS, it's an uh, annual relamping and a very difficult way to clean the fixture um, or replace the, uh, the reflector if that's what you wanted to do as well. 
Good points on relamping, Mike. Uh, the previously mentioned mercury content is also contained within the lamp, and we've seen some recycling costs and some additional legislation around disposal of this product, and we do anticipate that to continue. Effectively, the CT1930 requires no maintenance. So another benefit of the CT1930E is its optical distribution. Can you talk to me about the differences between it and a standard LED diode? A standard LED is 120 degree output. We're using an external optic to better mimic a thousand watt high pressure sodium light fixture. This is why we're calling this fixture a one-to-one -one replacement. We want to be able to take a thousand watt high pressure sodium down at the standard mounting heights that they're used at and hang this LED in its place, achieve the power savings, achieve the light output, and achieve a quality of light to produce the best possible garden. So as Ken said, the typical LED is 120 degree um, output. So that means the, the direction of the light outside of, coming out of the LED is at 120 degrees. Um, unfortunately, 120 degrees is not going to give you a one-to-one -one replacement for high pressure sodium. So we had to create an optic that would change the, the throw of the light to 138 degrees. And so by doing that, um, we basically built the CT1930 so it is a direct one-to-one -one replacement for high pressure sodium. And um, the other thing that we had to do was create the optic that would do that and um, that would survive the environment in, in the indoor garden space. So uh, we made it as a fixture that could be washed down and not destroy the optics. Uh, so the optics are protected. And when you take the high pressure sodium fixture down and you put the LED unit up, um, you're going to see actually improved uniformity. So the light is actually better uh, distributed across the canopy than it was with high pressure sodium. And the intensity levels across the room will go up. So you're saving energy, you're um, increasing the distribution of the light and the uniformity of the light in the room, and uh, you're saving power. So thanks for talking to me about optical distribution. Um, now let's talk about how that benefits a plant. Well, the grower wants to walk into the garden and see that the plants are all, at all the same heights. They don't wanna see some plants taller than other plants. So um, uniformity, the distribution of light is really important because if the light has hot spots, then th those plants get more light than the plants around them. So the plants will, will get taller. Um, so it's really important. Um, it's, it's not a, a insignificant thing to make sure that the light is spread uniformly around the, um, the grow area. And with the CT1930, the optics are so good um, they're actually better than high pressure sodium in creating uniform distributions of light. And therefore the canopy will be very consistent throughout the room. This has been a great conversation and what I'm taking away from it and hopefully the consumer is that this fixture is really built for the long haul. <laughs> Absolutely. What we have is a five-year warranty, an IP66 rating, UL8800 and a DLC certification. We cover all aspects. So it really doesn't matter um, from the component selection uh, to the casting designs, to the heat sinks, to the power cord, um, any way you look at it, this thing is really built like a tank. Um, and we will have no problem whatsoever uh, reaching a five-year warranty period. And then if the growing environment is, is a harsh environment from electrical perspective, so uh, many grows have uh, power uh, issues where they have surges in power or uh, they have brownouts or, the, or they have whatever happening that, that disrupts their power. Um, if they're running a generator, they typically don't size the generator big enough to, to really have stable power. So you see a lot of um, uh, damage done to high pressure sodium systems because they were never really meant to see those uh, power interruptions. With the CT1930, it has built-in surge suppression for 6 kV. Um, which will take a, a lot of those issues out of the garden. And frankly speaking, uh, these things just won't break. So you guys, let's dive a little bit into controllability of this LED. Well, our initial effort here was to integrate our LED products with our Gavita 1000 watt high pressure sodium. So we've made our units so they can communicate using the same EL controllers that our customers are possibly using today. This is great because it allows customers to use the existing controls that they already have. 
So if you don't use a Gavita controller and you have a building management system, the CT1930 will accept the zero to 10 volt signal for dimming on your, you know, your own uh, building management system. That's a good point to bring up, Mike. The drivers that we're using are a commercially available driver that do use a standard communication protocol that's commercially available for most LEDs, for all LEDs. So this will allow somebody to use their existing platform or greenhouse controls to communicate with our fixtures. With all the benefits of the CT1930E, what are some potential impacts that people might see in their growing operations? One of the major impacts that the grower will see is that when they walk in the room, the plants will look like they should look. Um, you know, many times you walk into a grow and it's so, uh, the room is so yellow, it's hard to tell what the plants really look like. So. The plants look very natural underneath the LED light. Um, this is a white light LED source, so the room looks uh, perfectly like you were walking outside. Um, so from that perspective, um, any, any um, you know, disease or uh, pest inspection of the plants um, makes the plants look uh, like they would if they were outside, so it's very, very easy to do. Um, the other thing is, is that um, you know, in terms of plant growth, what do you see? And so um, it's a very minimal difference from high pressure sodium to this uh, CT1930. Um, in terms of overall size of the plants, there might be a slightly smaller um, plants, um, a more bushy plant, but not, um, not dramatically so. So that uh, I don't think that the typical grower would really notice the difference um, from switching from high pressure sodium to this LED source. If anything, we do hear reports of a positive benefit, shorter nodal lengths, more flowering sites, in the end, more product. So to wrap up, um, this content was great. What's in the box for the grower? So what should they expect when they buy a CT1930? The CT1930 includes a wire mount setup in order to hang the unit from the existing rope ratchets or an adjustable hanger if you were to raise the fixture uh, up and down. It also includes a rigid unistrut mount if you were to hang it from your greenhouse structure or industrial structure included in the box. You get both mounts. You will need to designate your power cord. Again, as Mike mentioned earlier, in several instances, you'll be able to reuse your Gavita power cord if that's what you're retrofitting. But that is one thing that you'll want to keep in mind because these units can be powered at multiple voltages, you do have to designate the power cord at the time of order. And we've got these 120 through 277 volts, so any voltage the grower is going to need is going to be covered. Correct. And the unistrut is for an inch and five eighths unistrut, which is the most common unistrut used in North America. Well, thanks for joining us today. Um, Ken, Mike, I really enjoyed this discussion. Um, I, I think it's a really exciting time in lighting, and um, I hope people get really excited about the CT1930E like we are. Absolutely. It's an exciting time to be in lighting. It's an exciting time for LED. There's a lot of energy rebate incentives available and a lot of reasons to make the switch now. Look into it. The CT1930 really is the next evolution in LED lighting. And the rest of us from Hawthorne, we really miss uh, going to MJ Biz this year. Um, it's usually the highlight of our year and with a launch of a product as significant as the CT1930, we really wish we could be there. So um, everybody stay safe and we hope to see you again next year. We're all under the influence, an influence that connects us. We know this passion. Hawthorne is business under the influence of innovation of a movement, of family, of progress. Author, business under the influence of us.